Hello fellow hobbyists, and welcome to Drunken Gorilla Painting. In this video, I'll be tackling a royal warden in the colours of the Saltek dynasty, though the techniques used on this model could be applied over an entire legion of soulless murder bots if you so wish. With all that being said, grab your brushes, round up your paints, and brace for the Great Awakening. Now let's get painting. I put together the model in two sub-assemblies, the gun and his arm, and the rest of the model. This was to make painting the chest on the warden a bit easier. The model was primed first in black, then in lead belcher, to make base coating a bit easier for the next step. We now base coat the entirety of the model in lead belcher. The only place to avoid hitting with this is the gun casing, though even in due course we'll be doing some touch ups on that. For now, just to be sure to get an even, strong colour across the model. We want to start toning down the metal a bit. To do this, we're going to give the whole model a wash of Nuln Oil, making sure it doesn't pull too much in any one area. Next, if you want to break up some of the model, you can pick out some of the metal in Warp Lock Bronze. I personally picked out the spine and hip joints in this colour, though it's really just a matter of preference. Some of the Necron models in the range, such as this Warden, but also Immortals, are marked with stripes on the face, presumably to denote rank. On this model, we'll start by base coating it with Rakarth flesh, watering it down slightly to help apply a smooth coat. We follow this with a couple of layers of Ulthuan Grey, again keeping the finish as smooth as possible, whilst making sure to get a strong colour. Back to washes now, this time with Agrax Earthshade, hitting the entire model with this, including the white stripe. The metal areas we previously picked out in Warp Block Bronze are now getting a wash of Bealtan Green. Don't dilute this, but do apply a thin coat, more to tint the colour than to actually shade it. Next, we're going to highlight the steel with Lead Belcher, with quite fat highlights centred on the edges of the plates. Going back to weathering the metal, water down some Rhinox hide and begin to glaze it onto the model. There are two ways we're going to apply this. The first is to pull it down to the bottom of the larger plates, such as the torso and shoulder blades, to build up some dirt and grime on the lower parts of the metalwork. The second is to run it into the scratches and dents in the armour, as well as any panel lining, such as the elbow and knee joints. We're going to be doing the same again, but with Doom Ball Brown this time, and applying slightly less than before. Moving on to the bronze now, we start with a mix of 50-50 Balthazar Gold and Warplock Bronze, layering this onto the raised areas of the metal. Pure Balthazar Gold this time, and as always, covering slightly less than the previous step, building a bright to dark transition on the metal. We then start to weather the bronze with an initial glaze of Stegodon Stale Green, applying this in particular to the recesses in the spine and panel lines, but you can also pick out some of the flatter areas on the bronze and build up the colour there as well. This colour is then reinforced with a follow-up glaze of Sotek Blue. Ulthuan Grey is the next colour, and we use it to layer the white once again, making sure to leave some of the shaded area showing towards the back. We're going to weather the white in the same manner as the metal, by running first Rhinox Hide, then Doomball Brown, both watered down, into the cracks and lines on the stripe. The white is then finished with a highlight of white scar, following the edges, both along the shape and any cracks along its surface. As a precursor to the next steps, we'll be blocking in some black on the model as a base coat. These areas include the cables, the weapon casing, the eyes, and iconography on the model, such as the chest piece and sternum. 
Before we move on to the Gorse Blaster, in earnest however, we have one last metallic part on the model to do, which is the gold segmented cloak. We're going to start this with a base coat of Retributor Gold. We then tone this down with a wash of Agrax Earthshade. And we then layer it back up with Balthazar Gold. The recessed lines and markings on the glyphs are picked out in watered down Rhinox Hide. We then add a further highlight layer using Retributor Gold once again. Starting on the Relic Gorse Blaster now, in the same manner as on the white and metal before, we're going to be picking out panel lining with watered down Rhinox Hide and Doombore Brown successively. Using similar colours across the model like this can help tie the figure together as a whole, while still keeping visually distinct areas. Also note the metal, both bronze and steel, were painted in the same manner as the armour before it. We're going to really push the detail on the Relic Gorse Blaster now, with successive edge highlights, leading off with Mechanicus Standard Grey. We follow this with Dawnstone, keeping the lines thinner and focusing this on the upper edges of the casing. Administratum Grey is then used on the sharpest corners and edges of the blaster casing. If you now want to add some scratches and battering to the casing, you can do so using Orthwan Grey, thinned down with water, making sure to keep the lines thin and random. The casing is now finished with the application of white in very small dots at the vertices of the casing. We're now going to address the ribbed pipes on the weapon and under the sternum of the model. These have already been base coated in black in a previous stage, so to start with, we're going to pick out the edges in Thunderhawk blue. Using the edge of the brush saves us a lot of work here and helps us keep clean lines. Using the same method as before, we're going to use rust grey, but make sure to leave some of the previous layer showing behind. This time, we're going to apply Fenrisian Grey to the most pronounced parts of each coil. These are then once again finished with another dot highlight of white to really help the coils stand out. For the next few steps, I'm going to be using non-Games Workshop paints here, specifically Ink Tank Screen and Ink Tense Lime from the Scale 75 range. Now, these are by no means essential. You can achieve a very similar effect with Caliban Green and Warpstone Green, diluted down with Lamian Medium, but I like the colour saturation and viscosity the inks afford. With that out of the way, let's get back to painting. We start by picking out the recesses surrounding any areas that are later going to be painted as glowing green, such as the barrel of the Gorse Blaster or the eyes. We pick these out in ink tent screen. We follow this with ink tense lime in the same manner as before, but leaving some of the darker green showing in the deeper recesses. Next up, we're going to work on an ominous glow around these areas. Whether you're using Caliban green or ink tense green, you're going to want to dilute it a bit more for this step, as we want to tint the colour beneath rather than simply painting over the top of it. To that end, glaze the colour along the barrel, pulling the stroke towards the area where you want the colour to be the strongest, in this case, the area closest to the orbs. The same technique again, but with ink tense lime or warpstone. As always, focus this lighter colour more towards the light source, in this case the orbs or the eyes as the case may be. We now base coat any tubing on the model, such as that under the sternum or found on the gun, as well as the orbs and eyes themselves in Caliban Green. Keep it smooth and make sure it gets a good, strong coat. We then layer with a 50-50 mix of Caliban Green and Warpstone Glow, covering the majority of the surface, but leaving some of the Caliban Green showing beneath. On the pipe, 
we want to put the colour towards the centre of the pipe, whilst on the orbs or eyes, pick a half and put the colour there, starting to build a gradient. Pure warpstone glow this time, covering about a third of the orbs and round half the length of the pipes. Once again, moving the colour towards the area we picked out previously. We then highlight both the pipes and orbs with a thin line of moot green. You can also edge highlight the sharpest edges closest to the orbs here to reinforce the glowing effect. These areas, both the orbs and pipes, but also any area that received object source lighting in the previous steps, we want to glaze with a Waywatcher green to pull the colours together and smoothen the transition. Finish these areas with a dot highlight of pure white. After this, the entire model receives a coat of Windsor & Newton matte varnish. This is probably the best point to also note that the gold detailing on the chest was done in the same manner as the gold cloak and the central glyph using the same colours as the green orbs on the model. Once the varnish has completely dried, we pick out all the metallics from earlier with an edge highlight of Stormhost Silver. This includes the steel, bronze and gold on the model. Keep the lines slightly irregular and broken to aid in the impression of scratches and weathering. After that, areas like the orbs and eyes receive a coat of Ard Coat Gloss Varnish to add some shine. After this and basing, the model is done. And there you have it, another immortal scion of the Sautek dynasty, ready to reclaim the stars under Imatek the Stormlord. I hope this video was helpful, and if you did enjoy it, please consider liking and subscribing. It really helps me out. Whether you loved it or hated it, please let me know down in the comments below. Thanks for watching till the end, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.